This is the second video in the How to Use Sources in the Homeric World topic series. If you haven't watched the first video, please go back so you can see what exactly I'm talking about. Now let's have a look at the topic of hunting. Now, one of our prescribed sources is the Lion Dagger, found in Grave 4 in Grave Circle A in Mycenae from around the 16th century BC or BCE. Immediately we've got a depiction of hunting. There are one, two, three three, four, five hunters against three lions. One of the hunters has fallen. He possibly dead, we don't know. But we can see that the hunters use a particular style of weapon and two particular styles of um, shield and that they seem pretty fearsome because they are fending off the lions and only one of the lions is still brave enough to continue attacking. So they've got spears, there's a man with a bow and arrow. We've also got evidence from this signet ring that shows a hunting scene. It's a gold signet ring found in Tiryns from around the 15th century BC, BCE. And here we've got two people in a chariot being pulled by two horses who are chasing and hunting a deer, again using a bow and arrow. So we're starting to see bows and arrows being long range weapon used for hunting and also a chariot being used for speed for hunting faster creatures. We've also got this lovely fresco of hunting dogs. Now it is heavily restored, so an awful lot of what you can see in this image is not actually original. But the parts of it that are original, which are dirty and darker, you can make out what they have restored. So it's not like they're completely going or nothing. We can see a boar shown in the middle, that is flying practically through these uh, reeds and it's been chased by dogs and we can see that from the distinctive pattern of their fur and this comes from Tyrants. So again think about how, what is the source? Here we've got uh, a, a weapon, uh, a dagger, we've also got a fresco so something that is important enough to paint onto a wall and we've got a signet ring and these might be used to actually sign your name perhaps in a in a tablet but they're more, more likely that they're made so that they are something that shows who you are it's in a signature important to you how might the source have been used so the lion dagger we think that this is far too nice to have been used as a dagger so it's probably a ritual device so that seems to suggest that hunting is important for status the same with the ring. This is something someone would wear and it's, it's inscribed into gold. So that also suggests status. So hunting again is a status uh, activity. And the fresco would have been on walls. It would be there to impress people and for enjoyment. People would enjoy looking at this. So again, this is something that suggests status. All of these suggest that hunting, because that is what's being depicted, is a status activity. And we can support this with other sources. <laughs> Here are three. Um, what are the limitations of these sources? Well, they're out of context. The lion dagger we found in a grave, so it's definitely important enough to be buried with, but how was it used? We're not entirely sure. We don't know who this signet ring belonged to. Um, and the fresco has been very heavily restored, so of course we can't be sure of its exact nature of the image, if this is exactly what we're meant to get from it, but we can be pretty sure. How about armour and weapons? Here is another one of our prescribed sources, the Warrior Vase, which is a crater for mixing wine, found in the House of the Warrior in Mycenae, and it's from around the 12th century BC or BCE. And this is the front of the Warrior Vase. You can also look at the back of the Warrior Vase, and you see here that we've immediately got two different armies. Look at my video on the Warrior Vase for more information on this. But we also can see what they're wearing. They've got greaves on their legs, they've got tunics, possibly a cuirass over their chest, and they've got two very distinctive different styles of helmets. They've also got spears, a longer spear on the front and possibly a shorter spear on the back, although that might just be the way that they're holding them, the way the spears disappear up into the top border. We've also got evidence like actual pieces of armour, like the dendra panoply, uh, panoply meaning a group of pieces. This is 15 pieces of bronze armour. Yes, it looks green here. Imagine it polished bronze instead originally. And there are leather thong ties keeping these pieces together and a boar's tusk helmet like the one it was found with. And these come from around the 15th century BC. So this is a direct piece of information of armour because it literally is a piece of armour. And we can see here that this might not have been particularly comfortable to wear, but 
but by gosh, that's definitely going to protect you from all manner of hits, especially around your neck and your shoulders, where you might actually be pretty vulnerable, especially if descriptions of how people are killed in the Iliad are to be believed. Looking at the Boar's Tusk helmet in a bit more detail, this one comes from a chamber tomb in Mycenae and we can see the pieces of Boar's Tusk have been sliced and then have holes driven through them so that they can be uh, held together again with leather thong ties. So it would have been pretty flexible. Inside was a piece of felt, a cap and that would have been quite close fitting. So you can imagine that's a bit more comfortable than perhaps maybe a, a metal helmet like we see from later on. So Continuing with this, we've got uh, a piece of evidence that are arrowheads found by Schliemann in Mycenae from the shaft graves, clearly important enough to put in a grave with you. We've also got a piece of fresco which depicts a figure of eight shield. It's very flat there, 2D rather than 3D, of course, because it's a fresco. It's painted into fresh plaster on the wall. And this would have been a very 3D object, that long line down the middle, a very long, thin boss would have been very pointy. And this was found at Mycenae. Could even suggest, like in the Odyssey, um, that they actually hung their weapons and armour on the walls when they weren't using them as decoration. We've also again got the lion dagger. It is, even if it may be ceremonial, a dagger. And there are other weapons found that look very, very similar to it, but without the amazing detail in the centre part. And here's another example of a beautiful piece of weaponry from Mycenae, from one of the tombs, uh, one of the shaft graves. This has uh, been made of gold, which you can imagine is not very practical because it's soft. And there are beautiful carvings and, and uh, incised detail and also possibly repousse and other techniques shown here with these two animal heads and all these swirls. So we can get the idea here that armour and weaponry can be beautiful and ceremonial as well as very practical. And it's really important to status. These are kept in shaft graves and other graves, but they're also painted on walls. Continuing this theme, we can look at evidence. <laughs> well, ideas about evidence anyway from Homer's Iliad, where descriptions of armour, for example, this arming sequence where Patroclus puts on his weapons and his armour, we're told that they're made of gleaming bronze and they have greaves with silver anchor pieces. Then the breastplate or cuirass goes on and it's decorated and richly worked. So again, this idea that they are highly decorative that's going to be a status item, though. We haven't seen that so far. The dendra armour is very plain. Then we've got bronze sword with silver studs. That sounds very similar to the lion dagger. And a great thick shield. We're not told here what it's made of, but other descriptions in the eye had suggest that it's made of layers and layers of leather. And then there's a crested helmet with a plume and he has two spears. That's going to be useful because once you've thrown it, otherwise you don't have one. We can also look at Linear B tablets. And here in this one, translated by Rita Roberts, we can see the Linear B um, symbols for so many spears and the number 12. So 12 spears. At some point they had in the armory at least 12 spears in this fragment from Crete. This is another one that reads so many and then the number 50, swords. Interesting because there's far more spears than swords discussed in the Iliad. Uh, you can look at my other video on different weaponry found in the Deaths in the Iliad video. But here they have a lot of swords, so that's very interesting. They're clearly going to be used, but is that ceremonially or otherwise? So think again, what is the source? How might that source have been used? What does the source depict or tell us or show? And can we then link this with other sources, just like we've done in these last few slides? And then again, think, what are the limitations of these sources? Well, again, the Iliad is a Homeric poem that is about possibly the Mycenaean period, but later composed and then only written down in the archaic period with about 500 years between the two so whether the detail that's being described is actually from the Mycenaean period or is actually from the archaic period and more into the iron age than the bronze age we don't really know and the linear b tablets again yes there's 12 spears or yes there's 50 swords but what are they being used for where are they being kept why do they have them at this time so quite a few limitations but still enough 
to actually be used as evidence. Now, if we talk about chariots, very specific topic here. So we've got again the signet ring showing the hunting scene where they're using a chariot. So immediately we can see that chariots are used for hunting. We've got this grave steely five, the over the sea grave steely, because we can see a man in a chariot being pulled by a horse and he has possibly got a spear, although that might actually be the reins linking to the horse. He seems to be chasing someone over these swirls underneath, and that's often being discussed as, as actually being the sea. So is this a mythical scene, or is he riding right up to the sea in his chariot, pulled by one horse here compared to the two on the signet ring? This is a list of things mentioned on the Pylos Linear B tablets. But they need bronze for bronze-tipped spears. They need arrows and ships needs bronze as well. They've got 600 rows and 800 coastal watchmen. But they've also got 117 pairs of wheels. The fact that these wheels are in pairs suggests that they are for chariots because we see in each of these depictions of a chariot one wheel on one side suggesting there's another wheel on the other side. They could, however, also be for carts, but we tend to think of carts as having four wheels. Then again, that is a multiple of two, so maybe that's a limitation. We don't know what the pairs of wheels are for. Maybe two pairs of wheels for a, a cart and one pair of wheels for a chariot. They could be not just four chariots, is what I'm trying to say here. Then we've got this piece of evidence, a fresco, a massively reconstructed fresco. Um, really, there's very little of the fresco left. But what we can see of this fresco of a couple travelling by chariot from Tiryns around the 13th century BC is we can see the wheel with four spokes. So we can see enough of the actual original fresco to see that. We can see the feet and the bum of the horse. We can see, amazingly, the front of the chariot and how it's connected to the horse, which is really useful. So there's actually... Uh, a, a strong piece of the chariot that links to the crossbar that goes across the horse. In fact, we possibly see two horses there, one outlining the other. And then we can also see the white arm of one of the people in the chariot. Now, white paint tends to be used to depict women. They're either white from being indoors because they're high status or they're white because they're goddesses. They wouldn't literally have been this white. That's a great exaggeration and it's a limitation of the paint being used as well. But it could suggest that women also use these chariots. They might not just be used for battle and warfare like we can see in the grave steely or hunting like we can see in the signet ring, but perhaps actually just for travel like in this particular image. More evidence for chariots. From Homer's Iliad, we hear about chariots being used to get to the battlefield. And then later, not in this particular excerpt, they're used to collect up booty from fallen people you have slain and you go home on them as well, off the battlefield. We've also got this piece of fresco. Again, quite well restored here. So this is not entirely original, um, but we can see warrior figures traveling by chariot, which seems to back up the evidence from Homer's Iliad. There we are comparing the pieces of evidence to back each other up. And so overall, think, what is the source? How might it be have been used? One's a story for entertainment and one's something to entertain you on the wall. So here, these two pieces are being used for the same kind of thing. Can we support these from other with other sources? Well, we've got all the other chariot sources that we just used to show that they're used for lots of different uh, reasons. And one of the limitations of the sources, I think we've talked about that quite a lot by this point. I've cut this lesson up into chunks so you can more easily take in the information you need before going on to the next one. So if you're ready, click on the next video in this series. And please subscribe as it really helps me make these videos.